you hand your seven-year-old son a glass of his favorite drink. It's different than his usual, but he won't know the difference. He's been drinking it for years, but recently you've been hearing that they've been unnaturally altering it to be less nutritious and possibly even harmful. Wanting the best for your son, you decide to switch to its raw, unaltered form. At least, those were your intentions. Now he's in the hospital, hooked up to a ventilator, fighting for his life. This and other similar situations are happening to many of your favorite foods, leading to hospitalization, illness, or life-altering effects. We trust brands to ensure foods are not just tasty, but more importantly, free of anything harmful. So what happens when that trust is tested? And here's what they just got caught doing. Consumers are speaking up. We cannot blindly trust the marketing of these companies. It's just that you can't control for all of these things. And lawsuits are being filed. The parent company has now been sued. Let's unravel the recent brands that are in hot water, starting with your morning glass of juice. You may want to pay attention because if you've bought this brand, you might be getting more than you've bargained for. When you walk through the juice aisle of your local grocery store, you'll likely see some popular names, including Simply Tropical. It's easy to see why it would be a top choice. Between the delicious looking fruit on the label and the all natural banner right on top, how could you go wrong? According to a class action lawsuit filed against Simply Tropical and its parent company, Coca-Cola, in January 2023, you could potentially go very, very wrong. Because if what the lawsuit claims is true, the juice proclaiming itself to be all natural has actually been contaminated with toxic PFAS at levels hundreds of times above the federal limit for drinking water. The word toxic doesn't hint at anything good, but what exactly are PFAS? PFAS stands for per- and polyfluorical substances, and they're primarily used to make coatings that can resist water, grease, heat, oil, and stains. If you have any nonstick pans, rain jackets, or even yoga pants, chances are they contain PFAS. And while PFAS add a lot of convenience to our lives, they're also highly dangerous if ingested. They can lead to liver disease, thyroid disease, and cancer, among many other health issues. One of the millions of people affected by PFAS was Amara Strand, an activist who fought to ban PFAS and ultimately passed away from a rare form of liver cancer she said was caused by these forever chemicals. So if they appear in your morning juice, that could be a huge problem. And it would go directly against Simply Tropical's claims that their drink is all natural and has nothing to hide. According to the lawsuit, the ingredients label listed filtered water as its first ingredient, which could lead consumers to believe care had been taken to remove anything harmful from the water. But when an independent third-party test was conducted on the juice, the results revealed the juice had high levels of PFAS. And what's even worse, the lawsuit alleges Simply Tropical and its parent company, Coca-Cola, have been aware of PFAS's presence in their product since at least 2021, two years before the lawsuit was filed, and didn't disclose this to consumers. If this is true, the lawsuit claims Simply Tropical and Coca-Cola broke 50 laws. Naturally, people were upset when the lawsuit was filed. We cannot blindly trust the marketing of these companies and we must be aware that they can put pretty much whatever they want on their packaging. Yet no accountability and it will soon be forgotten. Everything is now poison. All hail the mighty dollar. I hate this place. I am furious. I don't drink juice, but my son does. And this was the brand we have been purchasing for years. There aren't many companies that don't try to greenwash their products. If transparency isn't there, they deserve what's coming especially considering how many consumers drink this particular brand of fruit juice because they're under the impression it's natural and therefore the healthier choice. Not me drinking an entire bottle of this in one day while I was sick last week. Glad I don't drink orange juice, but my dad drinks this brand all the time, so I'm suddenly very worried about him. Man, gotta make everything at home. But some people found humor in the situation, like this TikTok user. Oh, no, 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 no. I paid almost $7 for this. And now it's got all kinds of toxins in it. We're going to fix that. Simple solution, guys. Simple solution here. Yep. I'm not letting that go to waste. No way. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Things quieted down until October 2023 when Coca-Cola moved to dismiss the lawsuit. But since then, there's been no significant update. Though the outcome of this lawsuit has yet to be decided, 
it's worth it to know this isn't the first time the Simply Juice brand and Coca-Cola have been in hot water. In March 2012, the companies were accused of fraud for marketing Simply Orange Juice as being a natural product, when it relied on added scent and flavoring that wasn't in nature. If you think the drama ended with your morning glass of juice, think again. It may extend to the milk in your cereal too, specifically raw milk. If you spent any time on the health and wellness side of TikTok, you may have come across a fierce online debate around pasteurized versus unpasteurized, aka raw, milk. Chances are, if you've had milk before, it's been pasteurized, a process where milk has been heated to destroy pathogens in food and then cooled back down. Raw milk is milk that has not undergone the pasteurization process. The only processing it undergoes after milking is filtering. It's banned from being sold in many countries, including Australia, Scotland, and Canada. But in the United States, dozens of states allow the sale of raw milk to consumers with varying levels of restrictions. And with the rise in distrust of health officials and a desire for more natural products following the pandemic, people are riding the raw milk train. Bon appetit. That's really good. I just finished my quart of raw milk and it was amazing. I have never not had a reaction with dairy before. I have found that raw milk can be good for people's gut because it has good bacteria too. Since it's not heated, the naturally occurring enzymes and probiotics remain intact. So some people who are lactose intolerant or cannot tolerate pasteurized dairy do fine with raw dairy. Raw milk has tons of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and proteins in their most bioactive form. The pasteurization process destroys the foundation of all of these nutrients. The fact the government isn't putting raw milk on the shelves because it's harmful, yet they're allowing McDonald's to give you diabetes. You to buy soda that's literally cheaper than water. But still, you can't buy raw milk is just preposterous. While these benefits all sound great, it's important to note there aren't any known scientific benefits to drinking raw milk. In fact, the CDC recommends only drinking pasteurized milk. And when you see the risks, you can understand why. In late September 2023, 12 people in the San Diego area contracted salmonella, with three of those people being hospitalized. According to the local Health and Human Services Agency, these cases were linked to Raw Farm LLC products, formerly known as organic pastures, including raw milk and heavy cream. This came after the same company's cheese was recalled due to salmonella contamination. San Diego wasn't alone. Seven cases of salmonella were reported in Orange County in the same month, also linked to Raw Farm LLC products. And this isn't even the worst case scenario. Mary McGonagall Martin gave her son raw milk thinking it was a healthier choice. He ended up in the hospital for two months, part of that time spent on a ventilator, seriously ill with E. coli. While her son miraculously recovered, his illness is something Mary will have to live with for the rest of her life. Every morning, I have to look in the mirror and deal with the fact that I almost ended my son when I made the decision to give him raw milk. But despite all these risks, some people think the benefits are worth it. But are they? One major claim is raw milk has much more nutrients than pasteurized milk, but that isn't exactly true. An extensive meta-analysis of 40 studies found only minor losses of the water-soluble B vitamins and vitamin C from pasteurization. Now, considering the already really low levels of these nutrients in milk, these losses are, are you know, biologically insignificant. It's kind of like if you had $1,000 in nutrients and you lost 10 cents of it. The levels of fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K also only decrease modestly. What about pasteurized milk not having as much protein? Turns out that's not entirely true either. 80% of milk protein is casein, and casein is heat-stable. Pasteurization does not reduce levels of casein. Another popular claim is that people who are lactose intolerant have an easier time consuming raw milk, but this isn't the case. Raw and pasteurized milk contain the same amount of lactose. In a blinded study, 16 adults with self-reported lactose intolerance drank raw, pasteurized, or soy milk for three eight-day periods in randomized order, um, separated by one-week washout periods. Now, researchers found that raw milk failed to reduce lactose malabsorption or lactose intolerance symptoms, compared with pasteurized milk among adults who were positive for lactose malabsorption. Even one popular claim among raw milk advocates doesn't seem to hold up to scrutiny. For example, it appears that those who drink raw milk who live on farms have lower asthma rates, but is it the raw milk that helps or the fact they live on farms with increased exposure to microbes? Ultimately, it's up to you whether you want to take the risk and consume raw milk. There are people who report drinking raw milk for years with no reported illness. However, 
The CDC says contamination in raw milk is unpredictable, and it's possible to drink raw milk for years with no side effects and then become seriously ill after drinking contaminated raw milk. It's also worth noting that once you reach adulthood, drinking milk isn't necessary. You can easily get your calcium from other food sources, such as fortified plant milks, salmon, tofu, almonds, and more. With all this controversy surrounding supposedly healthy foods, it may be tempting to just switch to eating candy full-time. And, of course, Skittles are likely high on the list of favorite treats. But that might not be the best idea either, after reading a lawsuit from July 2022. According to the complaint, Mars Incorporated, Skittles' parent company, allegedly included high levels of titanium dioxide as a food additive, an ingredient Mars pledged to remove from its products back in 2016. Yet, as of 2022, it still appeared to be in Skittles after being sold on shelves across the country. And because of the iconic red packaging and tiny black font, the lawsuit claims it's more difficult to see the actual ingredients, meaning consumers are not able to make an informed decision. With all this in mind, the lawsuit brands Skittles as a food that's unfit for human consumption. Once the news broke, some people were shocked, and others weren't surprised. Skittles are very toxic to eat, which, of course, I've already said on my page several times. So you're telling me that something is completely artificially colored and that sweet can be bad for you? However, some people simply didn't care. <laughs> well, as for Mars Incorporated, Justin Combs, the vice president of research and development, emailed a statement to the New York Times, which says the company is in full compliance with government regulations. While we do not comment on pending litigation, all Mars Wrigley ingredients are safe and manufactured in compliance with strict quality and safety requirements established by food safety regulators, including the FDA. But what's the big deal with titanium dioxide anyway? According to Healthline, it's a whitening ingredient used in clothing, food, and other products. While the FDA says it's safe to consume, it can become more dangerous in larger amounts. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, named titanium dioxide as an agent that could be a carcinogen, but more research needs to be done in humans and animals. According to the IARC, some studies had shown lung tumors could develop from inhaling titanium dioxide, but the IARC determined that food products with titanium dioxide don't pose this risk. Why? The main reason seems to be based on intestinal cells absorbing titanium dioxide nanoparticles, which some studies have shown lead to cancer growth and oxidative stress. However, other studies have shown little to no effect, so it seems the jury is still out on anything definitive. In any case, according to a 2019 study, food-grade titanium dioxide is larger and therefore absorbed poorly. Since it can't properly absorb the same way nanoparticles do, it poses no risk to human health. Yet, the answer still remains murky. A 2021 review of existing studies on the topic concluded there should be concern for human health following long-term ingestion of titanium dioxide. Even government health bodies can't fully agree on how to handle the use of titanium dioxide in food. The EU banned it from food products this year. The Skittles sold in Europe have a different recipe with different ingredients, as we can see in Insider's video comparing US and UK Skittles. And titanium dioxide isn't the only additive not included in UK Skittles. Artificial colors like red 40, yellow 5, yellow 6, and blue 1 are restricted in the UK because studies have linked them to hyperactivity and attention deficit in children. Food and drink containing these things in the UK have to bear a warning label about these potential adverse effects, which means that most manufacturers will simply avoid using them. Meanwhile, Canada and the United States still allow it in their food products. Perhaps the most telling sign of how confusing the data can be is this quote from Pierre Herx, a chemistry professor at Arizona State University, who also co-authored a study on titanium dioxide. When asked whether people should avoid titanium dioxide, he told the New York Times, I don't have a clear yes or no. However, he said it's possible there's an increased risk for children. Candy has some of the highest amounts of titanium dioxide, and it's primarily eaten by kids. If there's damage to the DNA, classical carcinogenicity, that is cumulative over time. When you are exposed to that in the younger years, it can hit you in later years. But avoiding it isn't easy. According to Scott Faber of the Environmental Working Group, companies aren't required to list titanium dioxide in the ingredients list. So if you're worried about this ingredient, your best bet is to simply avoid foods with added colors when you can. There is still hope though. In October, 2023, 
California Governor Gavin Newsom signed a law banning the manufacture, sale, or distribution of four chemicals used in thousands of food products in the United States. Interestingly, it's been known as the Skittles ban since an earlier version of the bill included titanium dioxide, though to be clear, it was not included in the final bill. So, while there seems to be steps made in the right direction, the future remains unclear for Skittles lovers in the United States. If there's one thing we can take away from these food-related lawsuits, it's that we should all be more careful with what we choose to eat and make sure we have all the facts before we put anything in our mouths.